late for them. No? <laughs> no. One hour, it's not late. I like Brazil, man. I like the whole culture. I was in Rio once. I went there once for a vacation oh, a yeah? long time nice. ago. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm from Rio. Nice. I think we are live. <laughs> Let me see here. Yeah. Put something on Instagram also and Yes, yes. Galera, já estamos ao vivo aqui, hein? Esperando vocês lá. Vem, vem, vem para vem o YouTube que vai ser legal o bate-papo hoje. Vocês lá. Yeah, but I've been, I've been in the U.S. for 20, 21 years. Nice. Been a while. How long have you been doing Amazon for? Since 2015. Nice. That's you... the secret, right? You know, me, I, we started in 2012, maybe, maybe end of 2011, beginning of 2012, somewhere around there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's the secret. Just do it long enough know. if you do it. No, that's why I forgot to change it to public here. All right, public now. As one another time, I was doing an interview with another Brazilian guy. Now, since I create the, the link earlier, I, I put it as unlisted on YouTube, and then I did the entire interview as unlisted, <laughs> not public. <laughs> it was like oh, somebody's watching. It's like twenty people watching. <laughs> like I realized nice. after we finish. That was like the, the, whole, the entire time was uh, is unlisted, not public. Oh my damn! <clears throat> Wait now. So let's just wait a little bit more. So when you started, you were doing arbitrage, right? Yeah. How long you been doing wholesale? I mean, wholesale full time since January <clears throat> last year. Okay. Yeah. Do you still do a little bit of arbitrage or no? Oh, yeah. I did today. Nice. How about you? Did you yeah, that's good. No, so I started in wholesale right away because I started working for someone and they were doing wholesale. Mm -hmm. So they kind of brought me into the business and showed me a lot of the stuff in wholesale. And I was doing that first. But over the years, as I got a little bit more familiar with wholesales, I got into a different kind of arbitrage. So we were buying stuff from Amazon in the U.S., and then like Target and Walmart in the U.S. also, and selling that stuff on Amazon in Europe. So we were doing a different kind of arbitrage where we're buying from U.S. websites, but selling it internationally. All right, let me, let me do the introduction here. Galera, então, é, hoje a entrevista é com Larry. Larry, I'm not going to try to say your last name. But Larry... Lubarski. <laughs> it's easy enough. Lubarski. Lubarski. So, é, ele, mais conhecido como Watchme Amazon, o cara arrebenta, vende milhões e milhões de dólares na, na Amazon anual também, trabalha com wholesale. E, e o legal é que ele criou uma ferramenta para poder ajudar a gente que trabalha com envios FBA, tá? que é uma ferramenta chamada 2D Workflow, e essa ferramenta ela faz com que a gente é, não só envie o que eles chamam de box content para a Amazon, mas como facilita no recebimento, agiliza o recebimento dos produtos da Amazon é, e faz com que a Amazon receba os produtos com menos erro. Tá? Então, a, a ideia dessa entrevista aqui é conversar com ele e contar um pouquinho da história dele, como que ele chegou até aqui e falar também dessa ferramenta que eu acho que é super útil para gente que trabalha com Amazon, para gente que trabalha com wholesale ou qualquer acho que qualquer outro é, método que você faz envio para Amazon. Muita gente não conhece o To Do Label, tá? Eu, eu vim, eu já sabia do To Do Label, comecei a, a realmente a usar quando eu comecei a trabalhar com com wholesale e aí você vê o tempo que você perdeu sem estar trabalhando com o To Do Label, tá? Então vou pedir para ele se apresentar agora, falar um pouquinho dele e no final é, vocês vão deixando as perguntas de vocês aqui e depois no final a gente vai, eu vou se for a pergunta para ele, eu vou passar para ele, mas aí no final depois eu me despeço dele e a gente continua a live para tirar a dúvida de vocês, beleza? Larry, sorry, I had to speak a little bit of Portuguese. It's okay, I love it. And so what I was saying is that you you like one of the biggest Amazon sellers out there. You know, it's like an inspiration for all of us. And 
also create this amazing tool that I've been using for, I don't know, five months, six months, and it was able to improve and optimize my FDA uh, shipments with that. And I really appreciate it. And I, 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 I even more appreciate it because uh, when it comes from an Amazon seller, you know, it's, it's good because you're there. So you're in the warehouse right now. So you, you leave Amazon every day. So you know all the you know, difficulties that we have, all the hustles. So you create a specific tool and then you can tell that that tool is developed from an Amazon seller because... Yeah, the, the, the best tools are developed when you develop them for yourself first. 2D workflow yeah. was made for myself, for my business to use first here in one of my warehouses. And um, yeah, it's a very helpful tool, helped my business tremendously. Cool. Glad that Thank it's you. helping yours. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself and just say a little bit about you and how did you start on Amazon? How much money you make if you want to? Because I think people, yeah, sure. a lot of people are starting right now and they have no idea what Amazon is or how, I mean, how far you can go, you know? I mean, just an so idea, I mean, just see his warehouse behind him. So, but yeah, yeah so, for, so my name is Larry. Um, for those of you probably who follow me on Instagram, you know me better as Watch Me Amazon. Um, one of the most, and I told Gus before we went live on the air, one of the most important factors to my success and to the warehouse and to everything that you guys might see in this video is I'm someone who's been selling on Amazon for over 10 years. I started in 2011, 2012, um, fell in love with the business completely, just you know, put my head down and have been trying to work as hard as possible over the last 10 years, learn as much as possible over the last uh, you know, 10 years. Uh, maybe five or six years ago, I started posting content and interacting with you know, different sellers online. And I met lots of smart sellers like Gus and started learning from the community and from other sellers and stuff like that. Um, do fairly well this year. Well, last year, 21, we did about 15 million in sales. Um, wow. And yeah, super pumped, super excited to keep it going. That's amazing, man. That's, that's my goal. It's yeah, we'll keep, keep, keep doing it. I know um, I asked you before how long you've been doing it. You said you started, what, 2015? 2015, yeah. 2015 and I'll add another five years to it. And I can, I don't, you know, I can't guarantee you how much you'll be making could be, you know, more than me, less than me, but I can promise you another five years from now, you keep doing what you're doing. You're going to be making more. I don't know what the number is, but it's going to be a lot more. But that's, that's the, the beauty of Amazon, right? If you keep, you know, keep working, doing the right thing, you know, you just want to keep growing. You, you keep growing. Correct. Hey, and you, you need you need a little bit of gasoline to throw on the fire. You need a little bit of cash also, you know, to really grow and oh, yeah, scale in this business. It's not just about hard work. You need to put in a little bit of cash and invest. And that comes over time. But, you know, the, the opportunities in this business are, you know, endless. But I think, what do you think? It's easier to start Amazon today or was it easier no. when you started 10 years ago? It was easier 10 years ago. It was easier 10 years ago. That, that's it's why easier. I would say it's, it's, it's it's harder today, and you'll be harder tomorrow. Yes, I always say that. Oh, yeah. it never gets easier yes. every day. Every and now it doesn't mean it's very hard, but every you know day, every week, every month, it always gets a little harder and a little harder. And what I always tell people about selling on Amazon, um, it is not a very complicated business. It is not a hard business. You don't have to be you know a, a genius or a rocket scientist or anything like that to do Amazon. But it's just a business that requires time, patience, and a lot of work, a lot of effort to, you know, get things going. And it takes a little bit of time. But, you know, I honestly think anyone who loves it, you have to love what you do. You have to enjoy it. But if you love sitting in front of the computer all day and e-commerce and, you know, selling on Amazon and researching products, if you can like that kind of stuff and put your head down and focus on it and are patient one year, two years, three years, this is a business that can turn anyone's life around, to turn my life around. You know, when I started selling on Amazon, I was dead broke. I didn't have a pot to piss in. I came from another job that I hated. I was a lot of money in debt. I was not in a good place in my life and, you know, put my head down, worked really hard, got in uh, at the right time, just focused, stayed patient, stayed working hard, and the rest is history, you know. And, and, and I think it's possible 
and I'm not just saying it, I honestly think it's possible for people to start now and do the same thing. But obviously, you know, it's not very complicated. It's not hard, but it takes patience. It takes a lot of hard work. If you're willing to do it, I think anybody can be successful. In I, this remember, I remember, I don't know how, how long ago was it, but you posted like a photo on, on like, it was a hurricane, hurricane something that floated your apartment and, you know, you lost lots of inventory there, right? Yeah, so um, that was, I don't remember, that was Hurricane Sandy. It was a, sand, uh, a big hurricane that hit New York and the whole East Coast of the States. I think it was in 2013, something like that. I don't remember the exact date of it, but it was right in the beginning when I was just starting out. Um, thankfully, I was still working for someone else at the time, so it wasn't 100% my own business then. But we had, we were operating out of a garage It was a garage and a house that was rented and it was in an area that got completely flooded. The water was up to here in the warehouse and everything in there was just completely ruined. Um, you know, luckily there was a lot of products like, you know, things that are like in bottles, like shampoo, maybe things like this. You can kind of clean it off, wash it and, you know, save some of the inventory. But yeah, that really sucked. We spent about the next month cleaning everything, going through all the debris, throwing out all the garbage saving what we could. So you started as an employee for someone that was doing wholesale on Amazon? Is that right? Correct. So wow. what happened was, I'll give you guys the whole background story, right? So I dropped out of high school when I was 17 years old to be a stockbroker. Um, I was in that business for about 10 years, had some good years initially in the beginning, but ultimately it wasn't really the job for me. I hated it. I was unhappy. I didn't make any money. I was going broke. I was going in debt. I was miserable. And after, you know, wasting my time in that business for almost 10 years, I finally quit because again, I was making no money. I wasn't successful. I was in debt. I, you know, didn't have a pot to piss in. So quit that business. Um, I was looking just for a regular job. So one of my friends at the time, He has an optical store, a physical brick and mortar optical store where they would sell glasses and sunglasses. And I went to work at his store just as a regular employee, a customer service employee. He also had a website at the time. He had his own website that they were selling glasses and he was selling some of those glasses. He was putting them on Amazon. He was putting them on eBay. So he needed someone to do customer service, basically uh -huh. answer emails, speak to customers, ship out some packages. Um, at the same time, he also started doing Amazon FBA in the U.S. So he was selling the sunglasses that he was buying with his wholesale accounts for his store. He was selling that on Amazon FBA and starting a nice little business. Um, this person also had a beauty salon. So they had a physical brick and mortar beauty salon. And they had accounts with wholesale distributors that they were buying beauty products for the salon. And they were also turning around and selling those products on Amazon. And that's when I first got introduced to the wholesale business model. Um, so I was working, not Amazon related, just a regular customer service employee for his <coughs> optical business. And uh, one day he said to me, look, you know, you see, we're doing this big Amazon business, Amazon FBA in the US. He told me all about it. He said, I want to do it in Europe. I don't have the time to do it. Wow. I'll put, I want you to do it because I'm also, this is a good friend of mine, someone that I know since we were little kids, we were, you know, we went to high school together, all that stuff. So he said, I need someone to do Amazon in Europe. Here are all of my wholesale accounts. I'll make you a partner. I'm not going to pay you anything, but we split everything three ways. Let's do Amazon wholesale in Europe. Yeah. You take care of everything. You do everything yourself. All right. So I'm working you know, regular job, nine to five, doing the customer service from him. I don't know what I was making, but it's probably like 400 bucks, 500 bucks a week. And then every night, every weekend, I would spend hours looking through the lists of, you know, the catalogs of all the wholesalers that he would have from the optical store, from the beauty salon, finding new accounts, doing that arbitrage work, finding those products with those vendors and selling them on Amazon UK. So I started in the UK doing Amazon FBA over there first. And I think, I don't know, maybe a year into doing it, we were making so much money from the FBA business that it already didn't make sense for me to do the customer service job mm -hmm. anymore. So left that, started doing it um, full time with him for about a year or two. Um, after that, unfortunately, we had a little bit of a falling out. 
he left me, I left him, started doing my own thing, my own business with my own capital in uh, 2015, I think it was. And um, yeah, I've been doing that ever since, man. Okay. Thank, thank you so much for sharing, man. That's yeah. a great story. So yeah, that's amazing. So, uh, galera, já compartilha o vídeo aí. Tem pouca gente ainda, tem 20 pessoas só. Compartilha aí. O cara já passou uma história aí que acho que em, em nenhum lugar é, foi falado isso, tá? É, vou falar um pouquinho agora da ferramenta com eles e depois vai deixando suas dúvidas que eu vou passar as dúvidas para ele também. Léo, let's talk about a little bit about the two D workflow. Now, yes. I know you, you you probably create that uh, for you for yourself first, right? And then you see like the market for it. Um, so let me ask you. Most, a... most of the people that follow you or that are watching this video, do you say that most of them you think are wholesale sellers or arbitrage? A little bit of both. Most, most are arbitrage. Uh, they they are like a transition to wholesale now. Okay. So the reason why I ask, I want to, and because you do wholesale, you can understand, I kind of want to demonstrate and explain to people what our inventory workflow looked like before using 2D labels or 2D workflow or before using 2D barcodes. So normally, you know, if you're doing arbitrage or if you're doing wholesale, usually the first thing you do when you receive, like I have pallets behind me, these pallets have mixed products, different products. So the first thing we normally do is we sort the pallets, right? We take all the items off and we sort them out product by product and lay them all on, you know, yeah. separately all on the, um, the warehouse floor because we, you know, we need to separate it and we need to sort it all the pallets. Then we would create a shipment in seller central. I would print out a bunch of FBA labels, um, I don't like to print labels one by one. I like to print the whole stack of labels for my whole shipment. But the problem is if I give that whole stack of labels to my workers, there's maybe 50 or 100 SKUs in there. They all look the same. It's very easy yeah. to make a mistake. So then I would sort the labels. I would take that stack of labels. I would cut them out with the scissor. I would staple them. I would separate them. And I would go out into the warehouse and I would put the right labels on the right product. I would say, these labels are for this item. This label is for this item. This label is for that item. And that's how I was delegating work to my staff. And one of the things that I didn't like about it, I had to always be, or one of my partners had to always be at the warehouse to be the ones to delegating the work, to giving them every labels, to giving them instructions, to telling them, this is a two pack, this is a bundle. Yeah. We would have to be the ones to do that. So I wanted to automate that process and create a system that can tell my workers in the warehouse, this is what you have to do today. This is your assignment, here are the label to generate everything where I wouldn't have to be involved with it. Um, another big issue was, that, and you know, we ship pretty large shipments. They're anywhere from 10 to 20 pallets every week when we ship and we would have you know our average shipment is probably 100 different SKUs maybe you know 800 or a thousand boxes and whenever we finish an item we would put the item back because you have to at the end of a shipment come back to it and do the box label separately box label, yeah. so at the at the end of every shipment you can imagine we just have an office filled with boxes on the floor, all sorted boxes, all separately. I would go, I would print um, all the box labels for my shipment. And then the worst process, and this was the reason why we started 2D, uh, 2D workflow, is we would have to take a giant stack like this of box labels, and we would have to walk around the warehouse and match up the right box labels to the right box. Because, you know, they're specific. You can't put them on any box. You have to find the right label, put it on the right box. So we would take hours and hours looking at the first uh, box label, walking around the warehouse, finding where that box is. Next box label, walk around the warehouse, finding where those boxes. And it's a process that would take very long. Um, and then I realized that using 2D barcodes, which is a way of a different way of communicating with Amazon, when you use 2D barcodes in your shipment, you can basically pick up a box, finish it, put the label on right away, and it's done and not have to go through that whole entire process that we were doing it initially. So the 2D barcode, it's been around for a while, right? It's been around for a few years, but most of the people don't know about it. Now, I knew so, about the 2D barcode, but I never used 
until I start doing a, a wholesale. Can you explain a little bit better uh, what is the 2D barcode and I mean, what is the advantage, the benefit? So of using? 2D barcodes are basically a way of communicating with Amazon. It's a way of talking with Amazon. It's a way of talking with Seller Central. So instead of going into Seller Central and entering how many units I have, what the expiration dates are, how many boxes, how many units in each box, instead of entering that information manually into Seller Central, you can basically create your own barcode, which is called a 2D barcode, and you embed all of that information into the barcode instead of doing it manually for every item. And then when Amazon receives your shipment, they scan your box, they scan the label, and that's how they know everything that's in your box and everything that's in your shipment. You don't have to enter all of that information manually. And you're right, up until recently, using 2D um, barcodes was pretty much not a lot of people use them. The reason is because Amazon lets you use 2D barcodes But in Seller Central, you can't create the 2D barcode. So most sellers, usually 2D barcodes were used by very large sellers who would make their own software for their own businesses so that they can use the 2D barcodes. Um, There are maybe one or two other companies out there that do 2D barcodes. Before I made my own, I tried some of those softwares. They didn't really do everything that I needed it to do. And that's when 2D workflow was born. Because aside from just using the 2D barcode software, it also created a shipment for me where all I have to do pretty much, instead of going step by step through my whole entire process, I just make a shipment. I come into the office. I tell my workers, this is the shipment you're working on. 2D workflow does everything else. It tells them what item. It tells them, so I don't know if you see, we have, you know, warehouse racks. When we receive items, we put the items away. 2D workflow tells my worker, you need, you know, 60 units of this, go get it. It tells them where it is. It tells them how many pieces. It tells them how to prep it. It tells them um, any special instructions that I want to relay to the people prepping. Um, And they press a button and the labels come out. The exact right amount of labels that before I needed to give them, that now comes out. They put it on, they enter, you know, I have 10 boxes of 12, they get the box labels, they put it on, and it's done. And we're allowed to go through inventory now so much faster, prep so much more than we would before using it, that it's really been a game changer for my business. Yeah, I mean, for my, for my business too. <laughs> Good, that's, that's before, the most important thing, bro. Before I sign up for your two, I was using one of your competitors, and I was paying five times more. I was I was using the Wizard Industries. Yeah, they charge five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars to do nothing. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Like so many limitations. You had that they they wouldn't even print the the expiration dates on the FNS table. I asked them. I said no, because this is a, it's not it's against Amazon policy. And then if I want to have the three one, the three one, three in one label, remember that we, we talk about yeah. a, a few times about it, would cost me more. And then when I saw you like advertise, remember I sent you a message, hey, when are you gonna release? No, I wanna test it out because you no, know, I need it. So that's when I started using it. It's, it's amazing, uh, guys. I mean, if you, if you work with FBA, I mean, even for arbitrage, right? I mean, when I was doing arbitrage, I was doing I was shipping quite a bit. Like, I mean, I always did small parcel, but I was doing, I don't know, yeah, so it doesn't, a week, it, something like this. It doesn't matter if you're using LTL or if you're using small parcel, it'll definitely help you. The only thing I would say is the keywords that you said is you were shipping a lot. So if you're shipping a lot, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely going to help. If you're someone that's only shipping maybe, you know, 10 boxes a week or whatever, then you don't need really something to help yeah, you because yeah, you don't yeah. have a lot. But for anyone who's shipping a lot of stuff, it's amazing. Because like I said, just the steps that I would have to do, I would have to print the labels. I would have to give them prep instructions. They would then, my workers, every time they prep an item, a lot of people do it this way. Every time you finish an item, they have a pen, they have a paper. They write down on a paper the box content information, the expiration date, the FNSQ. When they were done, 
they gave me that paper. I have to go to Seller Central manually. I have to copy, you know, all the box content that they are writing down, then do the box labels, then match up the box labels. Now, like I said, I just make a shipment. I don't even have to be at work in the office if I don't want to. I make a shipment. I tell them to work on the shipment. 2D Workflow does all the rest, gives them all the instructions, gives them all the labels, and it just makes it, you know, very fast to prep inventory. You know, so the, way, another... the way I do my shipment, uh, instead of do the sh instead of doing the ship direct on Amazon, I use Inventory Lab because I also have two guys that works on my on my warehouse for me. So I create a shipment on Inventory Lab, and it's, it's visually better for them. Just like you said, so we have. I also have all the products um, spread all over the warehouse, but they go on the on the inventory lab shipping. They can tell right away which product it is because visually it's there. You know, if it's a pack, if it's not, and also how to prep the product. Uh, and then from the inventory lab, we go to the two D workflow and do the the box content there. So that's what I do. I was trying to. Um, get rid of the inventory lab and then just do the shipping direct on Amazon and then from the Amazon to the 2G workflow. But I also, I, I mean, I, I think it's going to do more harm than good because it's going to be more complicated for them. Yeah, I, I think it's going to take longer for me to create a shipment like that. So because with inventory lab, I don't, I don't need to add the product first on Amazon and then create a shipment. I can do everything at once, you know, just adding the product as I create the shipping. So it's- Yeah, it's well, like, like I was telling you before we went live, the main thing, and this is, I was showing you, you know, the, um, the version of 2D uh, workflow that I use for my business, which is a little bit different. It's linked to my um, inventory management yeah. shipment. And we're gonna add very soon the feature of being able to create the shipment right from 2D workflow. So it's very easy, you just select the items that you want and they come right over yeah, into that, the That was going to be my next question. So for the future up, updates, so you want to already told you are gonna do that. Do you plan on making these two look just like a inventory tool also? Just like to he plan it so I, inventory and everything on that. So not this tool, but I'm gonna release also my inventory tool, and they're both gonna to work together. Together. But you'll be able but you'll be able to create shipments from this tool. But then once my inventory tool is out, both of them work together. So the way it works right now is my buyers, when they place an order, a purchase order is created in my inventory system. When inventory comes into the warehouse, the people receiving it, I have someone who receives the inventory, he sees all the purchase orders on a screen. He sees how many units, what we're expecting. They come into the warehouse. He basically checks it off. We received it. You know, we ordered 60 pieces. We got 60 pieces, ordered 100 pieces, got 100 pieces. And then they put it away on a shelf and they mark the location all through the software. We put this pallet in section Z2. Now I have on my inventory management, all of the items in my warehouse. I can see how many units we have, not in a shipment, just physically in my warehouse. And then I can go through that list and just select which items I want to create a shipment. I see what I have physically in the warehouse, select what items I want to send to Amazon, put it into a shipment. It automatically is into the workflow. I tell the guys just which shipment to work on. They work on it and that's it. Look forward to that. But you know, it, it's, it's not really honestly all about, you know, just using 2D workflow. You know, really the way to grow in this business is just always keep learning, keep improving, keep learning from other people, keep trying new things. You know, I was doing it the old way, keeping track of box contents manually and doing it that way for such a long time, kind of stubborn, not wanting to change, maybe a little you know, scared to try something new. It was the same thing even when I first started, you know, before I used an inventory management system, I was scared to use it before I used the repricer I was a little nervous to use a repricer. I want to do all the pricing myself. Do you, I, you, know, do you have your own repricer or do... I do. Yes, I do. You develop your own? Yeah. So that the, the software I was showing you earlier, my inventory software, it's basically a repricer. It manages my inventory. It manages the purchase orders. It does all the product research. Um, and it's also linked to 2D workflow. So it does everything. Hopefully it'll be out sometime soon. Um, but like I was telling you, my developer is slow as hell, man. You know, <laughs> but... Good. So uh, let me share my screen here and then just show them. 
because we are talking about the 2G workflow. Let me show them, I mean, the, the platform and a little bit of the, why we are talking about. So one thing that I like, and I even ask you if you could do a little bit different, is the dashboard. You know, I love yeah. the dashboard because I pay a commission for my, uh, for my guys. I pay like five cents for each product they ship to Amazon. And then, I mean, here, I can say, I can, I mean, right away, you know, it gives me the, how much, I mean, we ship 615 items today. Yes, it's 645. This week's, by the way, 2100. So, you know, and I'm going to give you a good tip. So we're working on, as I said, we're working on changing some of the things in the dashboard, but there are a couple of users who are using an upgraded version of this. And what we basically did, so you see how it says how many units they did today, how many units they did yesterday. Uh -huh. What we tried to do in a couple of different workstations, we put on a big screen, not the whole dashboard, but just big numbers, how many units they did yesterday, how many units they did today big screen just so they can Excellent. see every day what they did yesterday what they did today and what the 10 or so people noticed that if you have employees and you put on a big screen or you put a big sign telling them how many units they did yesterday how many they did today every single one the production went up a lot because yeah. when they're seeing how many units they do they work harder they work more they try to get to that next level yeah. just them visualizing it was very cool so we want to put like a little button where you'll be able to press it if you have a computer screen in your actual workstation where your workers are one screen will just show how many units big letters they did for the day i'll i'll, I'll if you do that i'll put a screen there <laughs> screen cost me 50 yeah. bucks you know I'll put a yeah screen. well i'm saying even even if you took like just a whiteboard and put it somewhere a big sheet of paper and put it somewhere and you wrote yesterday yes 550 yeah. Every single day you do that, you change it, you put the uh, how many they did yesterday. I promise you it's going to be 20% more every single day. Oh, yeah, it's a good tip. I mean, they have access to the 2D workflow because they are the one doing the shipment. They are the one working on 2D workflow. Uh, but this I really enjoy. It would be great if you could put, I mean, I could choose the timing frame for that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, let me show you guys. This is the, the dashboard, like I said, you're going to tell you uh, your production for today, yesterday, this week, last week, this month, and last month. So just like Larry said, it's a good for like a motivation so you can, you know, always do better than the day before and the month before. And we use that a lot because I have I have a goal of at least 10,000 items a month that I have to send to Amazon. And this is, I mean, this is perfect because from here we can see, so we are on the path to reach our goal. Well, we are not on the path. so. We're going to have to, you know, work harder those next, you know, three, four, five days so we can uh, reach our goal, you know, just like this day here, you know. So and now another thing is, is so everybody's okay. leaving later today because we need to finish 1,000 shipments. I don't care. And, and if you have multiple workers or if you have multiple, um, you know, prep stations in the warehouse, what we can do is we can give you two usernames. So you have one worker gets one username, one worker gets another user. And you can see how much this worker is doing, how much that worker is doing, how yeah. much another worker is doing. Maybe everybody is doing 500 units a day, but someone is doing 100 units or 200 that's units. Perfect. You can see, yeah. No, that's, that's even perfect for me since I pay commission for products that they ship. And then are they all way, working on one? Are they working on one prep station or they have two? I mean, they have one prep station, but I have two. I have, I actually have two prep stations. I have one for, for Merchant Fulfilled and another one for FBA, but they are right in front, of, one in front of each other. So I can have one guy yeah. working on the, and one, the other guy working on another one. And that way I can measure the production from one guy. And, Differently, from separately. Other. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm going to contact you to do that. I want to do that for sure. For sure, man, I'm going to do that. But let's see. So also just people have a, a general idea. So when you start working a product on a, on a shipment, so everything comes over here, right? And then you start, you start, uh, they start gray, right? It's all green because that's the shipment we did today. But oh, it, it's, it gives you, I mean, the, the photo of the item, it gives you, uh, what kind of prep you need to do for this item. So it needs, you, you can print the expiration dates 
on the on the FNSKU label as well. So, so you put it here. How many items you have? If you have twenty items, so it's gonna print all twenty items directly from the two, and then you just do the box content, which is. Uh, I don't know how do I go back here? Which is gonna be this thing here. Hold on. So this is the the 2G label, right? So that's it, yep. Pretty much the tool, what it, the tool does create this uh barcode here on the bottom, and then this barcode is gonna tell Amazon. How many items you have on the box? What are the expiration dates you have for the item? What is the price? I mean, everything, what is the SKU? Everything's gonna be here when they scan. It goes- But even and better, what it's gonna do even better is as soon as they pick up a box and they prep an item and they put the labels on it and they're finished, they're gonna get this label right away and they're gonna put it on the box right away. So the biggest advantage is you don't have to put all the items back on the floor yeah. Wait until you're done with everything and then do the box labels at the end. You get the box label right away. So you pick up an item, label it, box label, you put it away, it's done. That's it. It's ready to ship. It's ready to go on a pallet. Before you take an item, you pick it up, you prep it, you label it, you put it back down. Do your next item, prep it, label it, put it back down. And then at the end, you have to go do all of your box labels. This way, you're doing it as you go, as you work. So they only have to touch an item really once. The item comes in, they prep it, label it, box label, it's done. You don't have to touch it again. Yeah. And the other thing that I forgot to mention, you can print the UPS label for, um, in the two hours, right? From here, you, we can print yes, the, the USPS label. So we can do everything here. See, you can print the pallet label, you can print the, the USPS label, I mean, the UPS label, everything inside the two. We just go back to Amazon, complete the shipment there, and it's done. The other thing that I like it, it's also uh, shipping. So here we can control, you know, the progress of the shipment on Amazon as they are receiving your, your item. You know, it's it's complete. If it's not complete. You know, yep. I always go back here. So this is our LTL. Those are our pallets that I shipped on on the 18th. Remember I told you my pallets takes forever to get there? <laughs> yeah. On the Sorry. 18th, buddy. So it's been like more than two weeks and yeah. it's still not there. So no, that's, that's not good. What I can do is I can come here and easily visualize uh, what item I, I need to go check. And then tomorrow I can just go to my warehouse, get the view of landing and then just track the shipment to see what's going on. Let me ask you, you might have a better idea off the top of your head than me. What's the, if you're doing small parcel shipment, what's the, um, is there a maximum number of boxes that you can have? It's like 150 something, but I mean, I never like get to, yeah, it's a lot. I never get to that, to that max. Because what I, what I was wondering, you know, we were talking earlier about how to maybe improve the process. And you said you were shipping once every day. And I said, maybe it's better if you ship every week. Yeah. But what if you ship every, once a week at the end of the week, very big shipment, but it's still SPD, not LTL. And just do it once to compare the price. What if it's a lot cheaper? What if it's like half the price, you know? Because maybe if it's a big, a big SPD shipment, maybe it's going to be half price. It could. I mean, I think, I think the problem would be the logistics. You know, because if I ship 600 items a day, you'll be 3,000 items at the end of the week. So the two guys, they won't be able to handle, and now uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be too much. I will have to, until I have- you mean physically more, giving it to the physically, guys? Physically, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they won't yeah. be able. So yeah. I will have to create the shipment, the entire shipment, and they, so let's say they, they're able to produce 600 items a day. That's it, both guys. Because they also do, they also receive the shipments when they get there, they, you know, they verify if it's damaged, if it's not, they do the, my merchant fulfill orders, they do everything. So I, I, if I do that, it's going to be too much. Maybe twice a week instead of every day could work too. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Well, to you were that. saying you were saying you give them bonuses also if they get a certain level of production? 
I do five cents for each item they ship to Amazon. So five cents. Always, or they have to hit a minimum first? No, they, they want to do always. Always, okay. Five cents. So there's no goal? You can't give them an incentive? If you I do, I do a goal. So the goal is 10,000 10, items a month. And then if they okay. reach the goal, I do another 100 bucks. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. You know, keeps them motivated. Yeah, I mean, you got to have them motivated. Man. Yeah. And it's working. Let me see if I have any questions here. I know we have a few questions here for me. All right. All right. Eduardo is asking if you also work with private label. No, I do not. You do not. You know, I, I had I had some private label. I, I stopped like working on PPC because it was like burning all my money. I <laughs> said, so, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's not for me. And then I realized yeah. it's much easier for us that does wholesale to create bundles than to create a, a, a private label because now it's kind of, I mean, if you create like your own brands, you now you see a lot of this on Amazon, right? You can, you can create your own brand, brand and then you create a bundle of snacks or a bundle of, right. I don't know, a, candy, a mix of candy. So it's pretty much a private label because you're going to have your own box and everything. But sure. working with ranking products, already, the demand is already there. And listen, I'm not knocking private label. It's a great business if someone, you know, it, does wholesale and they want to do a little bit of private label as well. That's excellent. Phenomenal. Try it. Go for it. I just personally don't, you know, don't do it yeah, really no, not, no. for no good reason, but I, I just don't. Yeah. I have the same idea. Man. Uh, Eduardo again. So you buy only from distributors, your supplies are only distributors or you buy direct from the brands too. Both, but I would say it's probably 80% distributors, 20% brands. Those brands, you have like an agreement, like an exclusive agreement with them? Some yes, or... some no. Most yeah. no. Some yes, some exclusive yes. Mm. But I'll tell people, especially in the beginning, when you're new, you're just starting out, it's your first couple of years selling on Amazon, you know, you're someone who's just starting out doing wholesale. A lot of people want to go direct to brands a little too early. Yeah. Take advantage of the distributors, man. There's plenty of distributors out there that you can make really good money on. And a brand for you know contacting brands is obviously um, a fair bit more difficult. So in the beginning, focus on distributors and growing your business and building your business and making some money before you just dive in and do brands right away. And one thing that I... I, I mean, I've been experienced that since I started because I've been doing full-time wholesale for a year, a little bit over a year. And it takes time, you know. You, you can't, it's, it's not like a, a sprint, you know. It's a marathon. It's actually, I mean, it takes time. Only 100%. this year, I was able to get exclusive price with one of my distributors. And then this week, I had, yesterday, I had a, uh, accounts manager going to my warehouse and he's going to, I mean, he's going to work on the price because I, sh I showed him. So I, I used that strategy that put him against my other, my other distributor. Yeah. So this one I buy from that, from X distributor. This one I buy from, he's like, well, we sell this as well. We sell this as well. So he wants to buy our business. The price. So, yeah, right. so if one of my business, I, I, I much rather buy everything with you than buy, you know, a little bit here and there. Like you said, you're gonna be surprised with the price I'm gonna give it to you. So I'm waiting. You're gonna give it tomorrow the price, but that comes with the time. Comes with time. Comes right? with time. It's not gonna happen right away. So right. Like yeah. he's not gonna to come to your warehouse to meet you right away. You probably have a relationship with him for a while. Been yeah. buying probably with that company for a while. So yeah, man. It, it, like I said in the beginning, it takes time. And one thing that was that was kind of fun because uh, most of this. Big distributors, they don't they don't like to work with online sellers or they don't work at all. And then this guy, they I mean they they now they starting work with online sellers. And then he called me and said, Hey Sab, can I go and, and visit you so you can you know talk a little bit? So yeah, yeah, just come here. So and I, I told him, you know, it's not nothing fancy, you know, it's a warehouse. You know, it's a warehouse full of products. Okay. So he got there. He got there yesterday morning and he's like, oh, wow. He was amazed. And I, I mean, my warehouse is only like 2,700 square feet. Yeah. 
And he was like, he saw the guys like working and all, all the products. He was like, can I? Can no, because I usually the kind of people that this person visits is usually going to be a brick and mortar store, yeah. small little store. And they're going to buy 12 bottles of this, 12 bottles of that. Meanwhile, Gustavo, you're calling him. You're saying, I want 600 of this, 400 yeah. of that, 300 of that. You know, for them, it's a lot bigger business. And I, and I also think because they have an idea of online seller of that, that guy that works out of his garage. Yeah. You know, yep. like a small and then he get there and like two people work. I have like a, a huge prep station there. Lots of, of good products that we sell, like brand products. He's like, how much money did you make last year? I said, I made 1.5. I said, oh, wow. So yeah, this year I'm shooting for three, uh, 3 million. I said, oh my God. He's like, I want this business, you know, I want to get this yeah. business. So okay. So what, what's, what's nice? And then he recorded that. He, saw, he, he made a, a film of my warehouse to show his director. Yeah. Uh, the potential that it is working with online sellers now. Yep. Um, I, th I think that they are changing their mentality now. They have to. They have no other choice. They have to. They have to. They have to. Otherwise, they're going to break. Just like they yep. the brick and mortar stores. Well, man, I don't want to hold you too much, man. It's almost uh, one hour. So I really appreciate your time. You know, you talk a little bit about bro. yourself, your business, the tool. Uh, pessoal, o link da ferramenta está aqui na, na descrição. Se você trabalha com FBA, entra lá, clica no link, assina. Pelo menos um mês para você testar. Você tem certeza que os seus envios vão começar a rece ser recebidos mais rápido, com menos erro. Pelo menos todo mundo que fez mandou mensagem para mim depois. Falou, cara, está bem que você falou. Meus, meus envios agora batem na Amazon, já são recebidos rapidinho, já fica, já fica liberado e já começa a vender. So I always say that to click on the link, sign up at least for a month, that they're going to realize that their shipment is going to be uh, checked in on Amazon quicker and the product is going to be available quicker as well. And I mean, if the products are available quicker, they're going to start selling quicker as well. Yep. And they're going to be able to, if it's someone, like I said, who's going through a lot of inventory, you're going to be able to, well, however much inventory you're currently prepping right now per week, if you're doing 500 units a week, this will help you do 800 units a week. If you're doing 3,000 units a week, this will help you do 4,000 units a week. So whatever you're doing with the system, it'll help you optimize and grow your production for 100%. Yeah, I agree. And then I, I sign on the bottom because I've been using this for, I don't know, five, six months. Since, since we started too, right? I thought yeah. probably was one of the first uh, people to sign up. Yeah, thank you. And one of the, um, one of like the best things that happened, you know, so sometimes, so we have lots of users. Sometimes once in a while, a user will stop using it. They'll unsubscribe. And then like two months will go by, three months will go by, they all come back. So if you have someone, you know, something where they stop using it and they come back, it's a very good sign that it's a valuable it tool, is. you know? It is. Yeah, I agree, man. So thank you very much. I'll let you go now. It's late. You're still in your warehouse. Uh, and we talked. So I'm going to contact you about having the second ID, a second login. Yeah. You have both yeah. of my guys using it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, guys. So I'm going to end here with you, but I'm probably going to stay there a little bit more just to talk to them in Portuguese and explain a little bit more. All right, brother. Enjoy. Have a great I, night, man. I appreciate you having me on I, so much. Thank you, man.